Uh, and the people of God said, Amen. Uh, can we at least talk to the Lord for a minute? Touch the person nearest to you, grab their hand. God, in Jesus' name, we thank you, we bless you, and we praise you uh, for this time of renewal, reviving, an opportunity to be restored. We thank you for what you've done in this place each night this week. And we are overwhelmingly excited about what you're about to do right now. And we thank you because on this night, not only do we hear taught word, proclaimed word, but we renew our covenant tonight through the taking of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. So stand in my body, speak through my mouth, let every yoke in the house be destroyed, every burden lifted, and above all, let your glory fill this place. We will be careful. Give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. If you expect to get more blessed, come on and shout, thank God and amen. Well, it's the day the Lord's made. Put them hands together. Rejoice. Be glad. Now, y'all know what? Let me tell y'all something. I'm just so excited to have the opportunity to uh, to be here. I snuck in here uh, Monday night and stayed up top and just enjoyed the word and was just blessed by it and I just appreciate Big Brother being nice enough to put me on the docket to come to give a lecture. And as you see, you all have been talking about me for the longest when I come this way. And so last year I started by making sure I shut all the conversation. Hey, Bishop, I see you out there. Shut the conversation down by making it a point to bring a wonderful handout. And it's fill in the blank, which means that we're going to do a nice lecture together as we study God's word on tonight. There is one coming after me who's mightier than I, whose shoes not worthy enough to bow down and untie. And aren't you glad to have such a great, elegant, and phenomenal pastoral team and ministry, uh, both in Pastor Willie C. and Sister Anita. Give the Lord a nice hand to praise for them. My, 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 my. And it's good to have some help. And I mean, the help ain't bad around here. Let the Lord's name be praised. Uh, Let me go to work. Luke 17, verses 11 through 19 is what I want to look at. And uh, my big brother gave me my time limit, so I'm looking at the clock. And I'm going to make sure that I be in accordance uh, to what, uh, so I can stay little brother, so I don't get in no trouble, all right? Uh, Now on his way, y'all see the Bible? Uh, I'm going to read verse 11. You read verse 12. Now, on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. (coughs) And called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Together? Then he said to him, rise and go, your faith. Uh, uh, If if I was preaching, but I ain't preaching, I would ask the question, when are you going to see? Now, now I know you, 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 I know you, 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 you're wondering, what you talking about? If I was, but I ain't, the question would have to be asked, when are you going to see? Luke would have us to know that Jesus is now moving towards the last phase of his earthly, y'all say it loud like you're proud, ministry, write it down, that is ministry. This is evident by stating now on his way to Jerusalem. It's almost as if Luke is saying, finally or after all of this or even a last, Jesus is about to complete his earthly assignment. And the assignment, as we well know, based upon what happens on the cross, 
is that Jesus was supposed to bring humanity and God back together again. And in all of his efforts while he was in earth, his primary objective was to live out the life of the word in flesh as found in Old Testament and be the fulfillment thereof. So he's now at the end of the journey. And Luke says, while he has been working here and there, he's now facing a place called Jerusalem. It was as Jesus was preparing to enter into a, oh, y'all on point now. Y'all talking to me now. Village, that's it. Which we all know is a group of houses or other buildings in the rural area, smaller than a town. This area was nestled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. There was some intentionality about this trip. There was some intentionality about this trip. In essence, Jesus could have gone a more smoother way on his way to Jerusalem, but he need go this way because it had some intentionality. And I want to remind us today that the God that we serve specializes in having some obscure roots with divine intentions. In essence, don't fool yourself, the only way some of us got to know the Lord is the Lord did a detour to come find us. And ultimately what the scripture shows us in Luke's lesson here tonight is that God is masterful about taking detours in order to locate the people who desire to be drawn closer to the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, let's go to number three. It was as Jesus was entering the what now? That what now? Who had what? Made, I tell you, a desperate appeal to him. Uh, and I do want to, I, do, I, did, I did try to take the time to italicize and bold the word desperate because what I want to have you to understand is that one of the dilemmas in the community of faith now is we've lost our desperation. There is nobody desperate in church. We are at ease in Zion. And there is a passage that says, woe unto you who are at ease in Zion and put your faith in the hills of Samaria. It's a challenge, child of God. You, you living too good. You done lost your desperation. Ain't no trials and tribulations happening in your life. You've lost your desperation. And when you lose your desperation, you use your hunger and your passion towards God. That's why sometimes we can sit in a whole worship service and never say thank you, never say hallelujah, never say glory to God because our desperation is gone. But when you are in need of something, ain't nobody got to beg you to bless his name. As a matter of fact, you'll go crazy because you need the Lord to stop by. They were desperate and they were desperate in their response and in order, I'm in number four, to have a great appreciation for this situation, I believe we need to review the, what's that word you think it is? Who? I know that's a good word. Y'all put it, y'all write down circumstances. The circumstances of these ten lepers. Here is the circumstances of ten lepers. The ten lepers were already ostracized by the community. They were not able to come inside the neighborhood. They were not able to hang out in the village. They were in an obscure area. They were kicked out. And when they found themselves around people or people coming near them, they had to holler out out of their own mouth. And we say life and death is in the power of the tongue, but they had to out of their mouth say unclean, unclean. And they had a bell around their necks as if they were a cow to therefore bring off a clinking sound because they wanted the people around them to know, get away, get away. And imagine, child of God, uh, being in that kind of context where people don't want you around because of what you're going through. 
Now, you're not the person who created the sickness that you're going through, nor the problem you're dealing with came because of something you did, but it happened because something has occurred in your life. It's your time to carry your cross. It's your time to deal with what you're dealing with. And when folks see you coming, they start acting like something wrong. They running in the corner, hiding out. Don't want to be around them. Tooting up their noses. Acting like everything is wrong just because you showed up. And children of God, can I tell you, that's a bad place to be in when folk act like you are a problem to be around. Child of God, here's what they're dealing with. They're dealing with the fact nobody wanted to be around them. Nobody wanted to be a soldier if they were considered to be a problem. While I reference these men, I'm in number five, these men's actions as an appeal, in all honesty, in all honesty, child of God, in all honesty, they were crying out to Jesus for help. Did y'all hear what I said? They were doing what now? Out for Jesus, crying out to Jesus for help. And I view them as desperate. Now, 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 did anybody, anybody, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I got, I got 17. Uh, anybody remember blind Bartimaeus? Son of Timaeus? Y'all remember him sitting by the roadside begging? And y'all remember them people said, uh, why don't you uh, be quiet? Jesus was teaching, which was what he was supposed to do on his way going into Jerusalem. He should teach along the way, and that's what he was doing. And the people were trying to hear Jesus, but blind Bartimaeus had a situation. And blind Bartimaeus kept saying, Jesus, <laughs> thou son of David, have mercy. On me, and, and, and I, I'm in the book. The book says, the crowd said, by the mayors, be quiet. But the text says, he cried out all the more. Jesus, thou son of David, have what mercy on me. Don't you know, child of God, that it's strange that all of a sudden the boy hollered to the point that Jesus, the Bible says, and I like this part of the text, uh, big brother. The Bible says, Jesus stood still. Uh, you better read the Bible every night and I, uh, you, you got to read the Bible because I'm a firm believer that there's some place in the Bible that should make you shout. And that which ought to make you shout is blind Bartimaeus was hollering, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. The crowd told him to shut up, but he hollered loud enough for Jesus to stand still. Now, children of God, can I let you in on something? That means you don't praise for nobody but Jesus. The masses go ain't got to like your thanksgiving, your hallelujah, or your worship. You don't do it for them. But oh, when you think of the goodness of Jesus. They cried, they cried, and he cried out for help. Number six, Jesus' response to the quest of the lesser lepers was to, what's their word? Say it loud. Command them where to go and to whom they shall present themselves to. Jesus said, go do this. He said, appear before the who? Based upon Leviticus 13, it was the priest's responsibility to declare who was and was not considered clean within the community. Go show yourself to the priests. Yet our text implies that while the lepers were en route or en route to the priests, they were what? Uh, I italicized it, which means you pay attention to that. On their way to church. <laughs> they got a miracle. They didn't get the miracle when they Go, oh, y'all, yeah, y'all with me. They didn't do the mirror, they didn't, they, didn't, they didn't get the mirror when they got the church on their way to church. They got the miracle. Yet they were still responsible to go to church to present the miracle to pass their litmus test. Now I need y'all to hear me now. They got the miracle, but were still required to go to church. 
Uh, y'all, 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 y'all. Some folk get blessed and stop coming. God didn't bless you to sit at home. God didn't bless you so you could play golf on Sunday morning. God didn't bless you so you could wash your car on Sunday morning. God blessed you so you would have sense enough to walk into the house of God, lift up holy hands and declare, if it had not been. I, I, I'm just, I'm, I, I want y'all to hear me. That, that, so, so that's what their response is. Does anybody here know how the miracle occurred? Well, it happened because of their obedience to Jesus' command. Can I ask, can, can, I, can I beg everybody here? Can I beg of you? Can I plead with you? Will you learn how to just do what him say? <laughs> I mean, I know it's hard, but it's all right. Just do what him tell you to do. And you'll be all right. Now let me press my claim. I'm down to 12 minutes. Upon recognizing the miracle, one of the men turned back. He was a what? The other folk knew the law. He wasn't studying the law. The other folk understood the ways and customs of the Jews. He wasn't studying that. Every now and then, you got to have people in the church that are naive enough to not know when to stand, when to sit, when to wave a hand, and when not to. Because that's real worship. The problem is we got too many folk who know how to shout on cue. They shout on cue. I'm going to say it again. They shout on cue. But they have not shouted because of what God is doing in their lives. And thus it is phony. It is fake. It ain't real, but child of God, real worship is spontaneous. And God brings something to your spirit to allow you to remember the goodness of God. <laughs> I'm in number 10. I'm on my way. The once now leper returns to give a what? Huh? Say it loud. Testimony to Jesus about what happened, where it happened, when it happened, but still was not, but was still in our regarding how it happened. Oh, good God, yeah. And then, can can y'all can y'all can y'all agree with me? I'm trying to get out of here. Do y'all can y'all agree with me? You know what God did. You know where God did it. You know when God did it. But if you tell the truth, you still don't know. How God did that? That's well, you, Pastor Bonds. You remember this? So my soul looks back and how I got over. Oh, I got to keep on going, even though he didn't know how it happened. The once leper did know through through whom it happened. He didn't know the what, he knew the, he, he knew the what, he knew the where, and the when. He didn't know how, but he knew through whom it happened. So, so, so he also returned to the whom to say what? Good God, yeah, shake your neighbor's hand, I'm out the way, and tell a neighbor you ought to say thank you every now and then. Upon offering gratitude for his healing, the once leper soon noticed that Jesus was overly concerned about the other nine that did not what? Return. And while I oftentimes, Pastor Barnes used to wonder why the other nine did not return, I have settled in my spirit that they were merely following instructions. They were following a rigid pattern of instructions. Jesus said, go show yourself to the priest. They went to where they felt the priest should be. When they opened their eyes, when they started looking, they were looking for the priest and the priest that in their mind was back at 
the synagogue. That's all they knew. That's all they could see. They could see nothing else but who was in the synagogue. They did not recognize that the priest in the order of Melchizedek, according to Hebrews 7, was in their midst. They did not know that Jesus was both no prophet through whom a miracle is performed, but Jesus was also the priest through whom the cure was pronounced. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, thank God for Jesus. Some of us have not yet gotten to the place where we understand you looking for somebody to do this and somebody else to do that. But when you get the right kind of sight, you stop looking for it to be in varied entities and know it's all wrapped up into one person. The Samaritan went back to the source of his miracle and told him, thank you. Because Jesus said, go show yourself to the priest. And in his mind, he said, if he can cure me, he must not just be a prophet. He must be able to declare healing and blessings over me and be a priest. Jesus turns to the Samaritan to offer the priestly right of cleansing by declaring these words. You're what? Oh, y'all about to act like I'm about to act like y'all in church. What did he say? Your what? Your faith has made you well, whole child of God. Faith allows you to see what others can't see. <laughs> uh, 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 oh, oh, Lord, I, I got too much time. I got I to slow this down. I, I got too much time. I got five minutes. I'm, I'm getting out of here now. I'm going to tell them quit because I might get happy. And you got somebody coming after me. Faith is essential in learning who Jesus really is. Let me see if I can do it. He is uh, on the cross. He was sacrificed and priest. Uh, y'all believe me? If you believe me, raise your hand. Let me see. Okay, yeah, some of y'all don't believe me. I see. Okay. When he was on the cross at Calvary, laying down, that's the best place he should have stayed. Because then all he is is a sacrifice. Uh, while he was down, him just bleeding by himself, for himself. But when they slipped up and raised the cross up, not only was he bleeding, but he's not able to open his mouth and began the priestly rites of atonement. They slipped up because he'd already told them, if you're going to get victory, you better keep me down. Because if I be lifted from the earth, he said, I didn't. He said, I'll draw all men unto me. Children of God, aren't you glad to know tonight that he is not only your sacrifice, but he's also your priest. He allows him to make intercessions on our behalf, but that ain't all. That ain't all. I got good sight. I wish folk could see who he is. He is creator and provider. What you mean, Pastor Gray? You see, children of God, too many of y'all keep asking for him to provide, but he's also going to spend time talking about God create. You do know he makes everything. So before you say you hungry, he's already made bread. Before you say you hungry, he's already provided fish. Before you say you hungry, he's already given you fruits and vegetables. And before you know it, while you there for crying, he's already saying, I've already provided everything you need. Will you shake two people's hand and say, neighbor to neighbor, God's already given me what I need. And since he's given that, I can shout tonight, he's my way and my way maker. 
Anybody glad that he knows how to make a way? Oh, please quit. Don't do me like that, please. He can make a way, and he's a way maker. How many times has the enemy tried to block the way God made? Only for God to make a way out of no way. On this night, can I ask you to do something for me? Lift your hands toward heaven and tell him thank you. Why are you telling him thank you? Because most folk don't know who he is. But I know who he is. My eyes have seen who he is. I know who he is. And morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I needed, my hands have provided. Great. Great.